Hi, I'm Kelly Chase and this is History Detective and today I want to talk to you about the child migrants who came to Australia after World War II. Just a warning that this episode mentions child abuse. When you think of child migrants of World War II, you're probably thinking about the children who were shipped out of the major cities during the Blitz or the Jewish children who were smuggled out of Germany. But today I want to talk to you about a different group of children. Children who were often lied to about their parents being dead and were shipped off to the other side of the world to endure a life of punishing labour, a life devoid of education and love. After the end of World War II, more than 3,000 children were sent to Australia as a part of a child migration scheme. This practice of sending children to Australia had been going on since the 1920s and it continued until as late as the 1970s. But after the war was when Australia accepted the largest proportion of children who were forced to migrate to Australia. Now, if you were thinking that these children were coming with their families or coming to live in the homes of loving families, this was not the case. These children were sent on their own to charity-run orphanages that in many cases mistreated them, neglected to give them an education, forced them to perform laborious farm work, lied about their status as true orphans, and in some cases physically, psychologically, and sexually abused them. For a variety of reasons, these children had ended up in orphanages in the United Kingdom. Some were illegitimate, meaning their parents weren't married and being a single mother was not socially acceptable at the time. Others had a father who had died in the war and because subsidised childcare was not a thing, the mother needed to work. Some children were abandoned and others placed in care temporarily. But generally, what they had in common is that they came from disadvantaged backgrounds. The welfare system had not been coping with the number of children who needed care in the UK, so they decided to send them to other countries in the Commonwealth. The children who were sent to Australia ended up living in charity-run orphanages and working farms where they were not nurtured, educated, nor respected. This remained a hidden shameful part of Australian history until 1986 when Margaret Humphreys, a social worker in England, received a letter from a woman in Australia who said she had been shipped to Australia as a four-year-old orphan and wanted help finding relatives back in England. This letter made Humphreys wonder how on earth had this woman been sent to Australia as a four-year-old? Her investigations were stonewalled by government immigration organisations in both the UK and Australia. So she decided to put an advertisement in the personal section of an Australian newspaper to see if she could find other people who had been sent off to Australia as orphan children. Margaret received a few responses from her newspaper ads and began devoting all of her time to attempting to reunite these once orphaned children with their families. This was especially difficult because often the orphanages had altered the children's names. After a feature article was published about the stories, even more people came forward and then in 1989, a documentary called Lost Children of the Empire aired in Australia and so many people came forward that she quit her job and devoted her life to reuniting these once lost children with their families. A dramatisation then aired on British television and afterwards the helpline received more than 10,000 inquiries. In 1993, Margaret Humphreys was given an Order of Australia medal for her work reuniting former child migrants and their families. In 2001, the Australian government conducted an inquiry into the treatment of child migrants and released a report called Lost Innocence, Writing the Record, Report on Child Migration. Even just scanning the subheadings is disturbing. Under a section called Institutional Care and Treatment, some of the headings include abuse in institutions, depersonalisation, sexual assault, physical assault, psychological abuse, bedwetting, exploitation of children in work and neglect. The report states their names were changed, they were lied to about the existence of their parents, possessions were removed, gifts and letters were not passed on and they were referred to by number and not by name. Educational standards were so limited or virtually non-existent that some child migrants have progressed through life with minimal literacy skills. In one institution, 
the Methodist Babies Home in Victoria, there was a sign that was hung up that said, Visitors are requested not to touch the babies. But it wasn't just the visitors who were not allowed to show affection. A 2004 Senate inquiry revealed the following testimonies about treatment. We had no nurturing, no love, no hugs, no kisses. Another former child migrant corroborates, My biggest complaint is that I was never offered or given anything that even vaguely resembled nurturing. No encouragement, no warmth, and absolutely no affection. Additionally, they denied the children any contact with their family back home. Why didn't they tell me I wasn't an orphan and that I had family all along? It was during my early primary school days when I was told that my parents and siblings were dead, having been killed in a car accident. I have since learned from my records that my mother and father and brother had written to me. However, I did not receive any of these letters. As well as this emotional cruelty, the children also experienced physical cruelty in the form of both gruelling laborious work and cruel punishments. From as young as six, these children, rather than being taught to read and write, were forced to do menial labour. Washing sheets, scrubbing, polishing floors, loading bricks on building sites, working in industrial laundries, milking cows, picking fruit and unloading lumber were just some of the jobs the children were expected to do. And this was at the expense of their education. The punishments dealt out were often severe. They were savage beatings, boots and all. The bedwetters received such humiliation they would have to parade around the room with their wet, smelly sheets draped over their shoulders. Another harrowing mistreatment was as follows. The usual method of discipline was belting the boys around the legs with a string of keys and many times the boys who were hit were left with bleeding legs. There are just so many awful stories from the experiences of these former child migrants. In 2009, Prime Minister Kevin Rudd made a formal apology to the victims of child migration. I'll pop a link to the speech below. Don't forget to hit subscribe and if you would like to hear a song on this topic, you'll find a link to Suitcase Full of Lies up there. And in the description below, you'll find a link to my website where you'll find a list of references and links to teaching resources. This is Kelly Chase on the case. I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this video is being recorded today. I pay my respects to the elders and knowledge holders past, present and emerging.